I give the call to the Honourable Member for Dunkley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. As part of a generation that grew up with the introduction and transition of the internet from dial-up broadband and now to the NBN, I have seen it become a major part of our lives, how we live, how we work and how we play. But like so many other innovations, it has the potential to be used for both positive and dubious means. Something which my wife and I face and will continually face as our young daughter grows up is how to ensure that she can grow and develop independence in an environment that is safe and secure, where she can learn from mistakes and explore new, new ideas without putting herself in danger. Children are among the most vulnerable members of our community, and they have a right to expect from us the care and protection they need. I implore all in this chamber to support the passage of this bill to prevent a repeat of what happened, for example, to 15-year-old Carly Ryan 10 years ago. We have seen the very public and widespread impact and devastation that these monsters and perverts leave on children in our communities. Our children deserve better from us, and we must deliver it. This bill, this bill builds up upon the critical work that has come before, and I thank Senator Xenophon for his work in this important area. It introduces an offence to criminalise acts to prepare or plan to cause, to harm, to procure or engage in sexual activity with a person under the age of 16. The legislation is focused on the use of a courage service, including social media. This is especially important as technology often develops at a faster rate than the law. Our duty as a government is to protect our people, especially the most vulnerable, including our children. To prey on children is possibly one of the most horrific prospects, and this bill seeks to prevent that. We will secure, through this legislation, the necessary amendments to ensure that existing law enforcement powers are available to combat all Commonwealth child sex-related offences. This includes a requirement to prove an intention to plan the offence, not the intention to only to commit the ultimate offence, nor requiring the targeting of a specific child victim. We are stopping perpetrators before the harm even reaches the child. Currently, the Criminal Code does not cover this sort of behaviour. As a dad, it is, in, it is so important to me that we have legislation like this. It is a parent's worst nightmare, Mr Deputy Speaker, to find that we, at home, where we should be safe, that we don't have that safety that we have worked so hard to build up, where it might be breached, for example, by a monster whose intentions toward your child are sinister and potentially murderous. I know it would be of great comfort to many families to know that this bill would pass through this House without a dissenting vote. Most schools, indeed, I believe all schools in my electorate, have very strong policies about cyber safety for their students. Perhaps two of the most encouraging responses I have seen to approaching uh, cyber, cyber safety in Dunkley are by Frankston High School and Mount Erin College, who have hosted cyber safety nights and issued special edition newsletters focusing on cyber safety although I'm sure there are many other schools in the electorates whose initiatives I have not yet seen. Productive relationships between parents and schools go a long way towards keeping our children safe, and it is our responsibility as the government to ensure that we complement their efforts and deter and respond to threats towards children, especially online. The government is committed to ensuring that the advancement of technology does not leave people unduly, protected, unduly unprotected, and this legislation makes it clear that these threats to our children are unacceptable and will be countered in every way possible. I commend this bill to the House with the utmost enthusiasm and hope to see it passed unanimously for the sake of our children. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker.